Here I'm still on page 34 over on the right column. Rousseau begins to develop his paradoxical argument. He's concerned, of course, with the mind. That's what's changed in the modern centuries. Our bodies are more or less the same. Rousseau says it's the goods of the body that are really fundamental. The society has to supply us with food and safety and the things that save our lives. But the goods of the mind are good too. He backs off a little from what Descartes says. The goods of the mind in Rousseau's view make life more pleasant. They allow us to enjoy the life that our concern with the body has saved. Life is hard, and the need to take care of the body is a kind of a tyranny, and the goods of the mind, the sciences and the arts, relieve that tyranny. They add adornment to it. They're like flowers to make everything in life sweeter. But this begins the critique. This need for adornment, or the, the desire for adornment, becomes very powerful. So this is the start of the critique. When life is hard, you know that it's hard and you're not seduced by it. When it becomes more pleasant, then you may be seduced and you may learn to love the domination that the life has over you, where before you hated it. It's a bit like the difference between having a job and a career. A job is something that you don't like to do, but you do for money. And so you're free of it, even while you're working on it. And you can give it up if you get a better offer, or if you decide you don't need the money, then you simply turn away. But a career seduces you into thinking that this is work somehow that you want to do, that you find it fulfilling. And so it forms you in its habits and leaves you less free. The pleasures of the mind, as opposed to the drudgery of the body, has something like that relationship in Rousseau's argument. Need has raised thrones. You depend on your body, and as a human being, you need a community to supply the needs of that body, and that creates political power. It makes a throne for a king to sit on. Bodily need builds thrones, but it's the sciences and the arts that make them that much stronger. It's worth noting that tyrants are always interested in cultural products. The king of France always surrounded himself with the most refined products of the arts. A tyrant, of course, can keep power with hard things and punishments, can buy guns and maybe dogs and tear gas. But if a tyrant is using the, ty the tear gas, that's, he's obviously losing. Whereas if he is winning, he puts up a statue of himself in the park or maybe sponsors a football team. Then the the crowds that come to cheer the crowd, the, the team will also cheer the tyrant. And he's seduced them at that point, and that is his strength. So this is the drawback to advances in mental things, progress in the sciences and the arts, that it makes happy slaves. Now, an angry slave is still free in his or her mind and so is a more respectable person, but a, a happy slave is contemptible. And cultural things are manners, the way we learn to do things because of science and the development of technology, all of those things that come to us because of mental advances seem to be necessities of life to the people who are used to them, to the people who have the habits. But Rousseau says that Need is the worst chain of our slavery. It's 
what takes the place of true virtue. And of course, truly virtuous people insist on being free and don't voluntarily give over power to other people. The progress of the mind in sciences and the arts add uh, refinements and embellishments to life, even important embellishments, wealth and power. But there still is, according to Rousseau, an inverse relationship between what seems to be good through the advancements of mental things and what's truly good, virtue. If you live in a refined society and you have money, you can buy tasteful and elegant clothes and then you will look good. But the truth about that is that you are likely to be covering up your real good or rather your real vice, a, a farmer who can't afford anything fancy probably is healthy and strong and therefore ultimately looks better. So advancements in sciences and the arts are like fancy clothes for the soul and they have the same paradoxical quality. They seem good, but really cover up what's bad. Now, souls are more important than bodies, and if a strong body is good, a strong soul is even better. Strong souls hang on to their liberty, and they dedicate themselves to taking care of their own business, because only a weak soul would allow itself to be ruled by another. Descartes thought that you would be better off and happier if you have advancements in sciences and the arts so that you can satisfy your desires. But Rousseau was more interested in limiting desires so that they could be satisfied. And you limit them by rooting out what's artificial, what's not really good, and attaching yourself that much stronger to what is truly good. And that, of course, is liberty. Athletes would rather strip down than dress up because they look good through the basic health and strength of their bodies. It's old and weak people who enjoy elaborate clothing because then they can substitute something artificial for what's bad in themselves. And if that's the way things should be with the body, then you should treat your soul that way even more. You shouldn't want to dress it up with borrowed power of the kind that Descartes offers to you. You should want to put your soul in a condition where its natural power without any extras shows through like the athlete's good looks. So here on page 36 is Descartes' thesis, and I've tried to sketch the argument for a thing that seems backwards is nevertheless, according to Rousseau, true. So I've given you a sketch, but you should study the text to see if you can take in the argument in all its complexity. I'm going to leave the next question up to you, on the last page or a little bit more of the reading, Rousseau discusses various nations and peoples from around the world and throughout history and considers the effect of developing science. What does it mean for a people when it turns its attention to the sciences and the arts? I think you'll be able to satisfy that question for yourself.